Please join with me in our opening words that's in your bulletin or up on the screen. Jesus, we come to listen to your words today. Open our ears to your voice and help us embrace your kingdom instead of our own. Amen. I want to remind you of several different things that are going on. We are grateful for you being here, whether you're in our pews or whether you're in the sanctuary of your home. We are praising God to worship together this morning. I want to remind you of your Connect card that's in your bulletin. Please fill that out. Let us know you're here. Also, if there are joys and concerns, please put that on that prayer list as well, so we can, or on, the, on your Connect card, so we can add that to our prayer list. We are grateful for Thrasher Kids and the mission that will be happening today. If you are willing and want to stick around after worship and go to the Soul Cafe and help stuff eggs for the Easter egg hunt that will be taking place on the 30th, they will gladly help get, get your help. Uh, but we are looking forward to stuffing uh, thousands of eggs, probably over 2,000 eggs. So guess what? We need help. So if you want to stick around and make that happen, that will be a joy. Next week is Palm slash Passion Sunday, which is hard to realize. Two weeks from today, we'll be celebrating uh, Easter. And so I want to remind you of several things we've got going on in the interim. We've got Monday, Thursday, and a Good Friday service happening as well, both at 6.30. On Easter, we have a 7 o'clock Easter sunrise service in Mountain View Cemetery. There will be four churches that will be gathered to help lead that, and we are grateful for that opportunity. Uh, and then 10 o'clock worship, just one 10 o'clock worship here in the sanctuary on that Easter day. Special care cards are still being collected. So we encourage you to bring those and make sure to get them in the basket right outside the staff office. We will make sure those get delivered to the wonderful folks that are still connected to our church that we may not be able to see physically as well anymore, but we are grateful, or not as often, but we are grateful for those connections with those cards. The last thing I want to remind you is this prayer vigil that we're going to be doing starting after the Good Friday service, uh, which is, again, around 7, 7 ish 7, 7.15 or so. Uh, you'll see that Easter prayer vigil is all filled out except a few spots. There's some empty spots, and guess what? Guess when those times that are empty? Oh, yeah, the early morning times. Though everybody's favorite times. So if you are still desiring to get involved and want to make sure to fill out some of those empty spots, that would be awesome. If you still want to get involved and you have no desire to go to the empty spots, that's okay. We still want you to participate in some way, some space, because it's an awesome thing to make sure you are involved in some way to be in prayer, because it's a powerful time as we are connecting with each other. So please take that opportunity. All that being said, let's continue worship with a word of prayer. Shall we pray? Holy God, what a joy to be in your house once again. We are grateful for this space. We are grateful for this time as we connect with you and as we connect with, other, with others. We lift up this time, O oh God, as we'll be talking about your words, O oh Jesus the significance of the wide gate and the narrow gate. We look forward to hearing better and better understanding what that means, O oh God, as we want to follow you. We are grateful, O oh Jesus, for this time. Help us, help us, help us. In Christ's holy name, amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we sing.
We invite our Thrasher kids to come on down, ages 3 through 5th grade. Come on down, boys and girls.
Amen. Please be seated. Ginger is going to come up and read scripture for us. Good morning. Today's scripture is from Matthew 7, 13 through 14. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. And there are many who take it, for the gate is narrow and the road is hard that leads to life. And there are few who find it. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you very much, Ginger. This passage talks about gates several times that Ginger just read for us. There's only two verses, but it talks about gates a number of times. Now, if you think about the different ways you'll see gates, different places you'll see gates, if you walk around, you'll drive around, you'll see them all over the place. One of the gates, though, that comes to my mind are airport gates. I'm a huge fan of flying. Now, some folks, maybe not so much. But I don't care what gate that I'm going through, I like going through an airport gate. I don't care if I need to wait. I don't care if I, need to get, de if I get delayed. I like to go through an airport gate because I like flying. And so, when you're thinking about those travel plans, when you're thinking about going through those gates, that is certainly one of the things and images that comes to my mind. Now, as we're looking at this text from Matthew chapter 7, what gate was most likely Jesus talking about? And it wasn't an airport gate, just to let you know. What gate is many ways or possibilities that he was talking about? Sorry? The gates of heaven. What else? Gates of hell, the gates of destruction. What other gates? Those are some good options. The gates of Jerusalem, the gates of city. So you think about the walls that a city would have. In order to get into the city, you have to go through a gate. There was also some other gates maybe you haven't really thought about yet. There's an image that Jesus likes to utilize quite often. As a matter of fact, just in the verses... After what we're talking about, he uses this image. Maybe I'll remind you with this. Oh, look at this. Oh. Maybe a sheep gate. So you think about all the animals that would have been around, there certainly would have been some kind of protection for these animals and a gate that they would have crossed to make sure to get into a safe place. Maybe Jesus was talking about those images, those images of city gates and those images of sheep gates or other kind of animal gates would have been very familiar with the people that were initially listening to Jesus. And again, he lifts up these images of sheep and sheep and, or in, uh, wolves and sheep clothing just in a few verses after the text that Ginger just read for us today. So if we think about these sheep and this gate that is there, this agricultural society, agrarian society, will recognize the significance of some of these images that Jesus is trying to help us realize with a narrow gate and a wide gate. And my hope is that we'll better understand some of these things that he's trying to help us realize. Now, as we talk about and we think about this wide gate, as we recognize whether it's a sheep gate or whether it's an airport gate or whether it's a, a gate that uh, you were talking about for a city, it's going to be a pretty wide place for you to get in so that people can access it or so that animals can access it and make sure to go from one place to another. Now, the text also talks about a narrow gate. Now, when you think about a narrow gate, what kind of images come to mind? A turnstile. Restricted or restrictive. The pearly gate out here? Possibly. Here's what I think about when I think about a narrow gate. I got one more image to show you. Check it out. It's not quite closed, is it? Let's see. Oh, there we go. So in many ways, most likely these sheep were inhabiting some of a place similar to this. Today we see this image much more than the first century for sure. But I think of a narrow gate like this. 
When you open these doors, it's pretty small, isn't it? In this passage, it talks about there's a wide gate. How many people are going through the wide gate? A whole lot of people. How many of people are going through the narrow gate? Very few is what Jesus tells us in this scripture. Now, as I think about, again, this image of a narrow gate and a wide gate, this is one to think about. And I recognize if this is kind of the image of a narrow gate, I'm not fitting in there, that, that gate. And nobody here is fitting in this gate. I might be able to put a hand in there. I could get maybe my few toes in there. After that, it's not happening. And so if this image of a wide gate where a whole lot of people are going through, this image of a narrow gate where other small portion of people are going through, it seems like that narrow gate is impossible to get through. It's not possible. How will we get through such a narrow gate like this? Say, I heard the answer. With God. There's only one way we can get through such a narrow gate, and that's with Christ's help. Only with Jesus as we are we able to get through such a narrow gate. I want to remind you of this text that we've been reading thus far for all of this time of Lent, beginning on Ash Wednesday and continuing each Sunday afterward. We've been talking about Jesus' Sermon on the Mount, and we are still there here in chapter 7 of Matthew's Gospel. And all through Matthew, Matthew chapter 5 and through chapter 7, we are talking about this Sermon on the Mount. And as we look back and review what we've talked about during these occasions, we started out on Ash Wednesday in the beginning with, or with Matthew chapter 5, and we talked about the Beatitudes and what it means to be poor in spirit. And we focused a little bit more on that text. We focused a little bit more on some of those other ones. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who meek. Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. We then went on and we talked about some of the challenges that we talked about um, loving our enemies. And what does that look like? We talked about the significance of anger and do not worry. We talked about uh, just last week that aspect of do not worry and the significance of how we do that. We talked about the I, if you recall about that. It is challenging for us to look at this text and say, how am I supposed to follow this stuff? We can easily say, it's impossible. I can't do this. And I want to tell you, you're exactly right. It is impossible for you to do this. It is only possible for you and I to do this with Christ. And that's exactly what Christ is trying to help us realize toward the end of this sermon to let us know there are two choices you can make. Did anybody see door number three? What about door number four? There's got to be more doors than two. And yet Jesus has told us there is only two gates that you need to go through, you can go through. Is the wide gate or the narrow gate? Which one are you going to choose, asked Jesus. You get a choice. Now, if you want to go through the narrow gate, you need Jesus' help to do it. If you want to go through the wide gate, you can pack as much stuff as you want. Go anytime you want, with anybody that you want. It's wide enough for anybody to go through with all your baggage. I'm going to talk about fly, flying in a plane. Everybody likes to take all their carry-on, right? Nobody wants to chuck, check any luggage if they can help it. And these wide gates, it doesn't matter. Bring it all. And the narrow gate, guess what? You've got to drop off some things. You've got to give up some things. You have to cast them aside. To say, I, I don't want this anymore. Now, as we wrestle with what exactly that looks like and what exactly that means, I want to share with you a passage from a book called The Common Prayer, A Liturgy for Ordinary Radicals. And there's a powerful example of what I believe, what I believe this means, of what it looks like to live and choose the narrow gate. Now, maybe you'll be familiar with some of this 
but I want to encourage you to wonder who this person may be that we're talking about. At the age of 16, he was kidnapped from his home by Irish marauders and taken to Ireland, where he was sold as a slave to a chieftain and forced to herd livestock. After six years of slavery, he escaped to his native Britain. Because he believed that his captivity and deliverance were ordained by God, he devoted his life to ministry. While studying for the priesthood, he experienced recurring dreams in which he heard voices say, O holy youth, come back to Aaron and walk once more among us, amongst us. He convinced his superiors to let him return to Ireland in 432, not to seek revenge or injustice, but to seek reconciliation and spread his faith. Over the next 30 years, he established churches and monastic communities across Ireland. When he was not engaged in the work of spreading the Christian faith, he spent his time praying in his favorite places of solitude and retreat. Who are we talking about here? Oh, St. Patrick. You heard of him? Were you aware of these details that I just shared with you about St. Patrick? St. Patrick, it is said, lived from 389 to 461. Six years of slavery he endured. At the age of 16, he escaped to go back to his home in Britain. And as he continued to follow Christ, Christ called him to go back to Ireland. Now, I'm not so sure what your answer would be, but I'm pretty sure I can tell you what my answer would be. A strong no. Probably with some other words in there. Not going to happen. This is a person that has spent six years in slavery. You think it would be an easy road for him to go and make that choice to go to Ireland again? I don't think it would have been easy at all. Not just to make that choice to begin with, but then the road that he was going to be following for those last or next 30 years. I'd imagine that was a very tough road a very narrow road that he was following. After going through that narrow gate, and I guarantee you he realized he was not doing this by himself. Today I am sorry to say that the most that we know about St. Patrick is that he must have worn green. After all, on St. Patrick's Day, that's what you do. And you drink green beer and you make sure the river is dyed green. So we can celebrate St. Patrick's Day. And yet 1,600 years later, we stand here and say, he was a follower of Jesus. And he chose the narrow gate and the narrow road. The things that you and I, I, would, I again, I would say, I don't know if I want to do that, God. That's going to take my security. It's going to put my safety at risk. I'm not so sure I can do that. I'm definitely not going to be comfortable with that. And yet, obviously, even if Patrick was having those kind of thoughts, he put them aside. He said, God, if you're calling me to do this, let's make it happen. What a powerful example of choosing the narrow gate. Do you think he could have chosen or you think he could have gone through that gate by himself as we're looking up this little barn over here? I'd say there's no way that he could have chosen that by himself. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make logical sense for him to go and make that happen. And yet God worked in incredible ways to the point where we are still recognizing St. Patrick. My hope is that we can also remember of his true faith. That we can recognize his life was devoted to following Jesus. Now we can ask ourselves, well, what does that mean for us today? Some of you may be called to go to Ireland. Some of you may be called to go overseas. But all of us are called to make a difference here and now where we are. And we don't have to go overseas somewhere. We have a neighbor we can talk to. We have a co-worker. We have a student. We have somebody that's right next to us that we're sitting to at lunch. In class, 
Those are the things that make a difference here and now. We're just finishing up a class that we've been doing, this Emotionally Healthy Discipleship class. We had the first session of the first course in the fall, and now we're doing the second course. This is Emotionally Healthy Relationships that we're closing up on. Some of us close out and finish out this week. Others are going to be doing it this coming week to finish this eight-week session. But as we were closing up this session, there was a passage of Scripture that we were reading And I want to read this scripture to you because I think it's quite powerful to help us realize the significance of our choices, the challenge of our choices. It comes from Luke's gospel, chapter 14, beginning at verse 25. It says this. Now large crowds were traveling with him, and he he turned and said to them, this is Jesus who then speaks, whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, Brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be be my disciple. You want me to read that again? It says, you need to hate your parents, you need to hate your siblings, you need to hate yourself in order to follow Jesus. Is that really what Jesus is saying? These are Jesus' words. We wrestled with this very text in class. This is the hard road. This is the narrow gate. What I believe Jesus is trying to help us realize is that if our parents and our siblings are making a choice over here, And Jesus is saying, you need to go over here. Which choice do you need to make? Jesus. When our friends are going in this direction, and Jesus is calling us to go in this direction, which decision do we need to make? That's the cost of discipleship. When many others are going down the different way, But Christ is calling us to go a different way. We need to say, Jesus, I need to listen to you. Not even my family do I need to listen to. I need to listen to you because you are first and foremost in my priority list, oh Jesus. And yet how easy it is to fall into that trap to say, well, I mean, everybody else is going in that direction. Mom and dad are going in that direction. My siblings are going. I mean, that must be the way I need to go. You know how difficult it is to say if the Lord is calling you to go somewhere else to say, I'm sorry, i got to go this way. That is a hard choice. Yet that's exactly what Jesus is telling us. That's exactly what Jesus is telling us what the hard, narrow gate goes to. And if we think that narrow gate is the hard part to get through, just wait till you get through it. And then there's that narrow road. But I'm grateful to know that God is not going to leave us, though. The promises of scriptures are real, that God's not going to leave us nor forsake us, helping us get through that narrow road. When we desire to stray and go off one way or the other, God, the good shepherd, will summon us once again with that staff and that rod, making sure to protect us, making sure to pull us back under that way that says, this is the road you need to take. Keep going this road. As we go through this journey of the Sermon on the Mount, these are some of the hardest words that Jesus is sharing with us in these passages from Matthew's Gospel, Matthew chapter 5 through 7. And I want to encourage you to start reading those a little bit more. We've been going through them in our soap studies each each day. Little sections here and there, and it's been awesome for us and our family. I hope it's been a neat connection for you. But I encourage you to go back and start looking through those verbs and words and making sure to look at those sentences and realizing, I can't do this. And I want to tell you, you're right, you can't do it. 
None of it's possible for you to do by yourself, but it is possible to do it with Jesus. There's a powerful quote that I want to read to you from John Stott from a commentary series called The Bible Speaks Today. And in this sermon, or in this commentary, there are some powerful words that he helps us realize the significance of these choices that we are making. John says this, The gate leading to the easy way is wide, for it is a simple matter to get on the easy road. There is evidently no limit to the luggage we can take with us. You want to lug it with you? Go for it. The need to leave nothing behind, not even our sins, self-righteousness, or pride. The gate leading to the hard way, on the other hand, is narrow. One has to look to find it. It is easy to miss. As Jesus said in another connection, it is narrow as a needle's eye. Further, in order to enter it, we must leave everything behind. Sin, selfish ambition, covetousness even if, if necessary, family and friends. For no one can follow Christ who has not first denied himself. The entry is also a turnpike gate. It has to be entered one by one. How can we find it? It is Jesus Christ himself. I am the door, he said. If anyone, enter, if anyone enters by me, he will be saved. It is this strong reminder that it is Jesus who is the gate. John's gospel talks about that reality. As we come to Jesus and we say, we need your help, we want your help, help me shed my sins, help me get rid of these, O God, so I can get through this narrow gate in which you are calling me to go to, so I can stay on that narrow road in which you are summoning me, in which you are keeping me. What choice are you going to make today? What choice are you going to make tomorrow? After all, this is not simple one and done choice. This is a choice we need to make every day. And my hope is we'll recognize the significance of saying, Jesus, I want to go through the narrow gate. Jesus, I want to go through the narrow way, but I need you. I need you to do that for me. I need to give up myself to follow you. I need to give up my sin to follow you. My hope is you will say yes and recognize the significance of Christ working inside of your life today, tomorrow, and every day. Amen and amen. I invite you to stand as you're able as we affirm our faith found in the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We take our time for joys and concerns this morning. I want to remind you about uh, Connect cards, so filling out any joys and concerns there so we can add that to our prayer list. I want to make sure to remind you we are grateful that the Montague family is now home from Boston. Little Theo is doing well and continued prayers for them. We are praising God that they are now back here in Vinton. We want to lift up Jay Childress, who had successful um, surgery earlier this week at Lewis Gale. He has continued to heal. We want to lift up Jerry Wamsley, who is at Lewis Gale. That is Susan Fouts' mom. Uh, she is deal dealing with pneumonia. We want to pray for the Gully family, for Mick and the challenges they are enduring with Karen's death. Her funeral will be up and coming on the 26th of March at 1 o'clock here at the church. We also want to lift up Barbara Howe, who will be having knee surgery this week on the 21st. And then we want to certainly pray for those in the Midwest. Many of you probably have seen on the news the challenges of tornadoes, and I know from at least those uh, three people have died, uh, but I know there's a lot of destruction and damage there, so we want to lift them up in prayer as well. All that being said, let's continue worship with prayer. Shall we pray?
Lord Jesus, thank you for worship. Thank you for the significance of gathering in your house and recognizing how we need to follow you and want to follow you more fully. We praise you for these words about the narrow gate and the wide gate. There are hard choices to make, O oh Jesus, because quite often I want to go through this wide gate. It is so much more easy. I can take all my stuff with me, O oh God. There's far less barriers. And many other people are going there too. And yet you are summoning me, O oh Jesus, to this narrow gate. A gate that is impossible for me to go there by myself and get through it. It's only with your help that I can go through. It's only with your help any of us can get through it. O oh Jesus, help us submit our lives to you. Help us to say, I can't do this but I want to get through. Oh, Jesus, help us cast aside these sins that easily weigh us down. That baggage, oh, Jesus, that is something that we have been carrying maybe for a long, long time. Yet when we put it at your feet, oh, Jesus, at your throne of grace, we recognize that you offer forgiveness to us. You help us get through that narrow gate and continue on to that narrow path. Come, be among us, O oh God. Help us in all the decisions that we make. As we stray in one direction or another, O oh God, call us back, summon us back. Use that shepherd's crook and make sure we are back in the place where we need to be with you. We love you, Jesus. Forgive us for the ways that we have not demonstrated that with our actions or our words or even our thoughts. Come and be among us today. Help us to be utilized by you. Help us to be your sheep who follow you. Oh, Jesus, we are so thankful for these images that we have learned and understood more about in this Sermon on the Mount that you've lifted up to us. Instead of us being overwhelmed by them, help us to be filled with joy. Recognize when we give ourselves to you that you will fulfill all these things. For that we are so, so thankful. For it is not about our work or our striving. It is about your grace. It is about the work you have already accomplished on our behalf. For that we are so thankful. Oh Jesus, we continue to pray for all those names that we've lifted up. All the circumstances right now that are around the world that are really challenging. For wars and strife and conflict. For natural disasters for death, for the difficulties that people endure for one way or another, O oh God, whether it's decisions they have made on their own or whether it's the challenges that have been pressed down upon them. Oh, Jesus, help us to lift the burden that people endure. Help us to be part of the solution of building your kingdom, O oh God, on earth as it is in heaven. It's that beautiful prayer, O oh Jesus, that we bring to you once again, that beautiful prayer that you taught us to pray when you said, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I invite our ushers to come forward as we give back to God just a portion of what God has given to us. Give myself out by days I can't find my keys to the lock. Some days I feel like it's all overblown, and then I look at you, I don't feel so alone. And I said, Hey, let your little light shine, let your little light shine for all the world.
Cause I can't get myself out the ring And then the cold wind blows right in my face Some days I feel like I'm against the wall But then I look at you standing tall It is not an easy road, or it's not an easy choice, as we look about this wide gate and this narrow gate. It is a challenging choice as we recognize what does it mean for us to go through the narrow gate of giving up stuff, things that make us comfortable, things that make us secure, things that say, oh yeah, this is what I like, and yet Jesus is calling us to something else. Jesus is calling us to prioritize Him over all of those things. When he calls us to go, we need to say, yes, or okay, let's do this. Not by our own strength, not by our own will, not by our own schedule, but by God's schedule. What a joy to know that St. Patrick made that choice, and all of us know his name. My hope is that we will know more of his story, recognizing what it meant for him to follow Jesus. He gave up his very life to make that happen. What are we willing to do? Amen and amen. Please stand as you're able as we sing.
Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. myself out the box Days I can't find peace to any life Some days I feel like it's all overblown Then I look at you, I don't feel so alone And I say, hey, let your little light shine Let your little light shine For all the world Let your little light shine, let your little light shine, for all the world to see. Some days I can't get myself out of the race, and then the cold wind blows right in. 